Hey guys, it's Michaela and welcome to another video. This video is probably going to be going up in 2022, so if that's the case, happy new year and I hope this year is an amazing one for all of us. And today's video is a particularly exciting video for me because I'm going to be going over my 23andMe DNA results. Just for a little bit of context, I have no idea what I am. I have absolutely no idea about my ancestry, my history, any of that. So I'm very excited to actually learn about my past. So the day that actually prompted me to want to get a DNA test, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in law school and I was in a group of other black women and we were just talking about where we were from. So while we were in this group, people were saying things like, I'm Jamaican, I'm Haitian, I'm Nigerian, etc. And then it got to me. And I was like, I'm black. I know I'm black, I'm pretty pretty sure I'm black. But other than that, I have literally no idea. And this is something I've kind of wanted to know my whole life, but as I've gotten older, it's just become more apparent that it feels like a part of me, a part of my knowledge is missing. Not really a part of me, but I love to have the full picture and this will hopefully further that process. So today I'm going to be specifically going into my experience doing the 23andMe DNA test, what you can expect if this is something you guys are interested in, and of course I will be going into my detailed results and all that encompasses, so I'm very excited for that. And I actually have not even looked at these results myself yet, so this is going to be a new experience that we will be experiencing together and you guys will be getting my true, honest, first impressions. So before we officially get into it, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified of when I post new videos. And with that, let's get into the video. So the specific product I purchased was the 23andMe Health Plus Ancestry Test. And I'll put the exact amount I paid on the screen in case any of you are wondering because they have amazing sales all throughout the year, but some times of the year are better than others. So I made the purchase on November 19th. I received the kit a few days later. I did the spit sample immediately, and then I sent it back within a day or two of receiving it. So I sent my DNA in on November 29th, and I got my results on December 12th. So the entire process of them analyzing my DNA and all of that took only two weeks. And I was very excited about how quick of a turnaround that was. So the actual process of collecting my DNA was very straightforward. It came with the tube and on the tube was a line marking and you had to spit into the tube, making sure that the spit you put into the tube was at least above that line they gave you. Once you close the cap, there's liquid that's inside the cap that goes into your saliva and mixes. And that's really it. You put the tube back in the box that it came with. There's already a prepaid label on the box and you drop it off at the post office. It was super simple, quick, and easy. So after I mailed in my DNA on the 23andMe app, you can actually track where your DNA is so you know exactly when it arrives back at their facilities. It tells you the entire progression of the test. So you know exactly where your results are in the process and when they're going to be done. And that's really it as far as the process goes. If there's any questions you guys specifically have that I did not cover, feel free to leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. But other than that, I think all that's left is to get into the results. So let's do that. And I have my boyfriend here on the side as well. He's interested to know what DNA I'm gonna pass down to our children eventually. So I've allowed him to be a participant in the audience this evening for this dramatic spectacle. That's probably not gonna be that dramatic, like I'm black but let's find out a little deeper than that. Okay, so I'm just going to log in. I have my laptop right here, so we can all look at it together. Signing in, very nervous. I don't know if anyone's actually usually nervous for these things, but I'm kind of terrified. So I'm clicking Ancestry, oh Ancestry, oh my God, oh my God. <gasps> okay, <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pull up that little thing that everybody always has, like where it shows you everything, because this is just a lot. Okay, view report. <laughs> okay, so. Wow. Okay, so I am 70. <laughs> can't even talk right now. I am 74% Sub Saharan African. Cool. 62% of that is West African, and 37.6% of that is Nigerian. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, that's like a big chunk. Like 38% Nigerian? <laughs> All my African brothers and sisters, you know where to find me. <laughs> oh my God. I am 13.5%, oh God, 
Please do not come for me for my pronunciation. I'm very uncultured, okay? I grew up in Navarre, Florida, okay? Just, just cut me some slack. I am 13.5% Ghanaian, Liberi, Liber, Liberian, Liberian, and si Sierra Leonean? <laughs> Ghanaian, Liberian, Liberian, that sounds right, Liberian. Ghanaian, Liberian, and Sierra Leonean. I've never heard of the last one. I am 3.6% Senegambian and Guinean, and I am 7.4% broadly West African, it says. That's the West African portion of me. Then I am 11.4% Cong <laughs> Congolese and Southern East African. Cool, okay. I am 10% Ang- <laughs> I am 10% Anglin. <laughs> I can't even pronounce this, bro. 10% of that is Angolan and Congolese. Cong Congolese, Jesus. I am 0.2% Southeast African. And I'm 1% broadly Congolese and South Southern East African. Cool. So the only relevant part there is the Angolan and Congolese part, which is 10%. Then, whoa. Y'all, I was born in Germany. I was born in Germany. I'm a military brat, for those of you who don't know. And I want to claim Germany so bad. You don't understand how bad I want to claim it. I only lived there for two years. I'm not German, really. But, hold on. So, I'm also 24% European, which makes sense. I knew I had something way back. I just didn't know how far back. So I'm 24% European. I am. 22.6% Northwestern Euro European. So when you break that down, I am 16% British and Irish, which I think my granny did say something about Irish being in our ancestry before. I'm 3.7% French and German. <laughs> just, just give me a moment. Let's just round of applause for me actually being German. Thank you. I am 3% broadly Northwestern European. Cool. And just for a little plot twist, I am 1% Italian. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so much. Okay, so I am 2% East Asian and Indigenous American. Love, we're both Indigenous American. My boyfriend's 25%, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take my little 2% though. Okay. With the Indigenous American, I'm specifically 1.4% and it says South Central. And then Obviously the rest of these are so small, they literally don't matter. Wow. Wait, so I'm like Nigerian, Nigerian. Like 37%'s a lot, right? Oh my God, I'm so happy right now. Like this is just so cool. I'm freaking Irish, bro. That explains why you're strong, because Nigerians are strong as hell. Thanks. You know, I just get it, I get it from my ancestors. Like they, you know, you know how it is. Love, can we please go back to my motherland? Because the United States is not doing it for me right now. Like, I'm just, I'm just, serious question here. You wanna to go to Europe? I wanna to go to Europe or Nigeria. So I have more Neanderthal DNA than 2% of other customers. So because of my Neanderthal DNA, I have one variant associated with being less likely to have a fear of heights. And again, guys, just as a disclaimer, this is all in good fun. I don't know how accurate any of these particular things are, but I'm very interested to see if they are relevant and accurate as far as my experience goes. As far as the fear of heights goes, being less likely to have a fear of heights, you could put me on Jupiter and tell me to jump to Earth. I don't know how scientifically possible that is, but I have literally no fear of heights at all. I also have one variant associated with being less likely to sneeze with a full stomach. Whatever that means. Okay, good to know, good to know. <laughs> okay, so it says I have zero variants associated with having difficulty discarding rarely used possessions. That is not true. I don't I don't throw anything away. I just can't. Like what if I need it one day? I don't know, who's, who's to say, you know? I have zero variants associated with having a worse sense of direction. Now I know these are not true because literally, I have never met anybody worse at geography than I am. Just putting that out there. I have zero variants associated with being more likely to have a fear of public speaking. That's accurate. 
put me in a room with a million people, I will talk to all of them and thrive. I have zero variance associated with being more likely to sweat during a workout. Babe. I sweat just by existing. You see my hair? I got my hair done literally today and it's already poofy because I was sweating just by existing. So not accurate. And there's a bunch of other ones, but I think those are the most interesting ones as far as it pertains to me. That is my ancestry composition. Oh. DNA relatives is the next little subsection. Huh. Apparently this is showing me 5,000 relatives, which seems is that real? Do I really have five? Th I just went to the last page of it, which is page 200. And the like farthest away it goes is my fifth cousin. I want to see if I'm related to any famous people. Can you see that? Again, this is more interesting probably to me and my family personally. So I'll go over this in a little bit more detail later. The last little section to get into is my health and traits. It's basically just going to tell me if I'm predisposed to anything. So let's see. I have an increased risk of chronic kidney disease. So that's cute. I have an increased likelihood of gout, which does run in my family. I'm aware of that. Okay, I have a slightly increased risk of late onset Alzheimer's. So at least it's not early onset. Is there early onset here? Okay, I don't see anything about early onset yet. So it also says I have an increased likelihood of type two diabetes. Again, I did know that that was in my family genetics. Those are good things to look out for. It also says I have a typical likelihood for migraine, which is interesting because I have chronic migraines. I was diagnosed with chronic migraines in undergrad and they plague me to this day. And then the rest of them, it looks like either variants are not detected or I have a typical likelihood. And the next thing I want to get into is the carrier status. So these are potential traits I could pass on to my children, but again, nothing is guaranteed. Let's see. Okay, so somehow out of the 45 carrier traits that are listed, I have not, I don't have a variant for any of them. So it talks about all kinds of things, kidney disease, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, maple syrup urine disease. I don't even know if I wanna know what that is. Wow, okay, that's actually really nice to know if I have kids that I hopefully won't pass anything on to them. That's really, that's actually really nice. That's really good to know. And I think the last little section I'm going to include in this video is the traits section. It says, explore the genetics behind your appearance and senses. There is a 56% chance I do not have dimples. I do in fact have a dimple. You see it? <laughs> Y'all probably saw it. Like you, oh, you can see it when I'm talking. You can see it right here. That's my little dimple. There's a 90% chance I do not have a cleft chin, which is true. I do not have a butt chin. No disrespect for my butt chin people though. We support the butt chin people. 63% chance I have detached earlobes, which I do. 93% chance I have wet, sticky earwax. Yum. 55% chance I had lots of hair at birth. I don't think I have a photo of myself at birth. If I do, I will include it. But yes, I was born with a lot of hair. It says that I'm likely lactose intolerant. Okay, I wanna talk about this really quickly. I have eaten copious amounts of dairy every single day my entire life. There has never been a period where I've stopped eating dairy or lessened my dairy or anything. And then randomly a year ago, I became lactose intolerant. And ever since I started losing weight again, which is what I'm currently working on doing, I've become less lactose intolerant. So if any of you have had that experience where you've, your lactose intolerance has kind of fluctuated with your weight gain and weight loss, please let me know if I'm insane because at this point I have no idea what's going on. 78% chance I have stretch marks. Listen, listen, stretch marks, they're gonna come, they're gonna go, they're beautiful either way, and I fully intend on having even more when I get pregnant, so not a problem. 63% chance I have a longer big toe. I would show you guys my feet, but no free feet, okay. 74% chance I do not have a widow's peak. Yeah, that's not true. I'm glad I have my hair out right now. You guys can see, definitely, I definitely have a widow's peak. Taste and smell, ooh, okay. So I likely cannot smell the asparagus odor, which makes sense because I've never understood that. The people that say that their pee smells weird when they eat asparagus, never have experienced that. I have slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro, which is when people say it tastes like soap, but I have never experienced that either. I love cilantro. More likely to prefer vanilla over chocolate ice cream? I mean, of course. 
Vanilla bean is my favorite ice cream flavor out of all ice cream flavors, so yeah. That's so cool! And then lastly, the category of weird and wonderful. More likely to be able to match a musical pitch. Okay, I'm not saying I'm the best singer, but I can hold a tune. If I hear a pitch, I can match it very well. I really can. Less likely to hate chewing sounds, which is m misophonia, misophonia. I definitely have misophonia. Like the sound of chewing makes me want to do bad things. It says I'm likely bitten more often by mosquitoes than others, which is very rude. About a 50-50 chance of experiencing motion sickness. When I was younger, it would happen all the time. Like I would get car sick every single time we were in the car. Now as an adult, it happens less frequently, but still happens, which is very annoying. Likely to wake up around 8.55 AM. Ha, huh. no. My ideal wake up time is probably 10.30 on a good day. Likely no photic sneeze reflex. This is when you look up at the sun and sneeze. Huh, that makes sense as to why that's never worked for me. This was super interesting to review. I'm very glad that I did it. I did also take an ancestry test because they were also having a really good sale for the holidays. So if you guys are interested in me making a video when I get my ancestry results back, I would be more than happy to do that. Overall, my experience with 23andMe was great. I really enjoyed learning about my ancestry and I can't wait to dive deeper into that after I'm done with this video. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, leave me any comments with any questions you guys have below and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye and go thrive.